Rob Howe. I'm a professor of engineering at Harvard University in the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. And we work on motor control, sensing, mechanical design in both humans and robots. I've been working on robot hands since my PhD thesis at uh, Stanford many years ago now. At that time, a lot of the interest in them was around uh, just trying to build something that worked. It was a mechanical design problem. And since nobody knew how to do that, they tended to use the human hand as an example. And that did not work out so well. Ten years ago, we started saying, well, if, if we keep building these humanoid robot hands, these anthropomorphic hands, again and again, and, and yet we never quite get past the structure to make them function correctly, then we tried to go in a very different direction. So working with Aaron Dollar, who was a student in my lab at the time, we came up with the idea of trying to see how far you can get with only one motor and no sensing or very little sensing. Much to our surprise, uh, it turns out if you get the mechanics right, one motor actually does real well. Even in unstructured environments where we aren't quite sure where the object is located because the computer vision isn't precise enough. So even with errors of you know, an inch or three, we can still grasp most objects successfully. By making things simpler, we made things much more functional. Now, can it do all the cool things that a human hand can do? No, of course not. Uh, we can't manipulate things in hand. Uh, we can't dial cell phones. Uh, but we can do the most fundamental and important thing, which is pick something up and move it to a new location. So for example, you can see with this mug here, this button in the middle moves the hand until contact occurs along the finger pads. You get the barometric pressure sensors as tactile sensors all along each of these different fingers here. And the fingers will move till they hit something and then stop. Afterwards, the hand tightens down to give you a nice stable grasp on the object. This compensates for some of the variation in object geometry. So you can see you get a very nice stable grasp on this object. Likewise on this one from a completely different configuration. You can also pre-shape the hand to different shapes depending on the shape of the object. In this case, we have it configured for a power grasp. You can also configure it for a spherical grasp or a pinch grasp, depending on the type of object that you're trying to grasp. Now, if you have two fingers, then when you wrap around an object, you don't have very good stability for power grasps. Um, on the other hand, you do need that ability to pinch two fingers together in order to get a uh, good grasp on small objects, thin objects, that sort of thing. Uh, now, with three objects, you can get pretty good stability because you've got a lever arm there for when objects try to pivot, uh, cylindrical handles and all. And in addition, we needed to be able to do simple manipulations in the hand, like, for instance, pulling a trigger on a power drill or uh, pushing a button on a flashlight, something like that. So again, you can have two fingers doing the grasping, and the third one is then free to do some interactions. It's clear now that a combination of passive mechanics of good mechanical behavior mixed together with uh, the right kind of sensing, uh, not too much, nothing too complicated, so it's very difficult to use, uh, works, can work together to give us that manipulation ability in unstructured environments. Sensing, of course, is absolutely essential. And, and if you live in the Northeast in Boston, as, as we do here, you realize this every winter when your fingers get cold and you lose all the dexterity. The reason you can't manipulate things very well is because is your fingers go numb. You lose the sense of touch, and the relationship between the object and the fingers is, is no longer apparent to your brain, and you can't move your fingers correctly to accomplish the task you want to. Now, people have been building robot tactile sensors, the things that go on the fingertips, uh, for many years, and there are good sensors out there. But a real issue has been expense and customization and packaging. It's been really tough to figure out how to build sensors that didn't involve weeks and weeks of work, thousands of dollars in effort, and customizing them so they can be applied to any particular robot hand. In the course of building our DARPA hand, we were looking around for some kind of inexpensive sensors we could use. The new generation of barometer chips, which are designed for smartphones, they include a pressure sensor, a temperature sensor, uh, an analog to digital converter, high quality instrumentation amplifiers, a microcontroller and a bus interface, and they only cost about a dollar. Now when we wanted to put these onto the fingers of robot hands, of course we had to convert them from air pressure sensors into contact pressure sensors. So we tried putting rubber over the top of them, and that worked, but it gave us very insensitive devices. 
And the, the trick at the end of the day was to put liquid rubber over the top of the chips and then pump it down in a vacuum chamber that draws out the air and allows the rubber to fill the chip completely. As a result, we get very good sensitivity, sort of one gram level sensing, uh, which is more than enough for most uh, robot control tasks. And we find, for instance, that it allows us to operate our robot hands so that they can detect the first stages of contact. That allows us to bring in the other fingers until they just make contact as well, and we get nice balanced forces. We don't knock the object out of the way before we get a good grasp on it. On the back here, you can see you've got a laptop that handles the data logging. You have batteries that power the hand system. You've got a little bit of other control architecture that makes the whole system run. We've designed it to be mobile so that we can take this around to normal life, take it to supermarkets, take it to back to our apartments, try and cook with it, and do other normal tasks of daily living to see what control systems are needed to perform these proper tasks. I think robotics really is at a cusp now where, again, because locomotion and navigation are finally working well, computer vision has come a long way. It's useful in, in a lot of environments. Uh, that if we can get these hands uh, out there commercially, there will be applications for them, that uh, people will be able to build systems, sell them at a reasonable price, people use them, and, and they will be useful. Thank you.